Hey guys, so Lloyd here, back again with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the Mattel Masterverse Scareglow. This is, of course, Scareglow as he appears in the Masters of the Universe Revelation series, which is on Netflix right now, and if you haven't seen it, go see it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Some people didn't, but they saw. So there you go. Um... We're just going to end that argument right there because hate is going to hate. I thought it was a really, really good show. That said, this is a figure I have been waiting for forever, it seems. Uh, all my friends online got the exclusive version from Mattel Creations, except me and actually El Tenda. Shout out to El Tenda, being one of the poor man's scare glow club, like yours truly. Nothing wrong with that. This figure, I think, is just as good albeit without the wired cape, which is to be expected, and the fancy box, and the cool black light reflective paint. Okay, maybe it isn't, but it's cool to me, so you know what? You gotta work with what you got sometimes, and in this case, that's what we're doing. We're getting into the meat and taters of this guy. Comes with two extra hands. He comes with the pointing pointer hand, and the turn your head and cough hand. Oh yeah! Or as I like to call it, the bitch slap hand. And this guy is pretty much uh, some heavy reuse of Skeletor. Slash He-Man, slash all the other figures that utilize this body mold. So, nothing really new here. Getting up close and personal with him. He does have his Scythe of Doom. Not to be confused with the Hand of Doom. What you gonna do? Funky, deep-cut Black Sabbath tune for those of you metal fans out there. But it is a nice, dark, almost olive green. The blade is, I think, the same color as the rest of uh, the weapon here. It's really more of a halberd than a scythe, but who am I to judge? Scareglow's my favorite. He can do what he wants. Um, I really, really dig this guy. And I liked that, uh, who is it, Tony Todd, a.k.a. the Candyman, slash Darkseid, slash The Fallen, for those of you Transformers fans out there. Really awesome voice talent. He did a really good job as Scareglow here. And I hope we get to see him a little bit more in part three i hope we get a part three and they're not just gonna stop doing it because people are spicy and want to leave nasty comments online i'm not a fan of that but whatever uh, you do you i guess even if what you do is uh well freaking lame but i really dig this guy man he looks awesome i even like the cape i kind of don't mind that it doesn't have the wire i just like how it kind of flows behind him not really one for wired capes. I kind of just prefer them to sit there and look cool just hanging out. Because you guys know me. I display my figures pretty manila on the shelf. I don't really uh, pose them up too, too much unless it's for, you know, video like this one. But as far as articulation on this guy goes, his head will rotate. Look up and down. We will take a look see at the glow in the dark feature in just a moment, as well as do a head swap with the Origins one, because I know some of you guys are interested in seeing that. Uh, he does get some pretty good up and down, a little bit better than most figures in this line. And his head is actually nice and kind of, it's snug on there, but it's not too, too tight. So I appreciate that. The shoulders go out to the side, they go back down. I popped the camera here. It's got a bicep swivel. It's got a double joint at the elbow, which can be easier said than done to move. He does have new lower arms. Uh, these are not He-Mans, I don't believe. Uh, they feel a little bit different. They're not Skeletors, of course, either. So that's kind of cool. I dig that. He does have a hinge at the wrist as well as a swivel. But on this side, it's a little bit stiff. On this side, not as much. And uh, I would like to get some uh, up and down hinges on these grip hands at some point, Mattel. That's one thing you got to work on. Diaphragm joint, it does work pretty well. Crunches forward, doesn't really crunch back. Tilts side to side. 
Uh, it has a slight rotation up here. Like you can get it and it will actually stay. But the bulkier rotation is going to come from down here. Which is pretty stiff, but it does work. And for those of you wondering, no, there is no rib cage painted on the back. I kind of hoped there would have been, but since he does have a cape, I guess he doesn't need it. Hips, nice and tight on this guy, but I didn't have to modify them to get them to work. I didn't have to use any lubricant or heat or anything. They just kind of work good out of package. Um, so you can give him uh, almost a splits. His skirt kind of gets in the way, which I'm not a fan of that, really. I would have just preferred like a cloth skirt or the skirt just be one piece and just kind of had some uh, room so you could move his legs. But it's not anything too bad. You can work with it, I guess. Uh, and then he also has a thigh cut right at the top there, which works pretty well. It is pretty stiff, so, you know, be careful with that. You don't want to break anything. As far as his knees go, his knees are really tight, so, um, you know, it's really, really hard to move that top one, so I'm not going to waste your time watching me struggle to do that. And then he also has a boot swivel, and he has the ankle rocker with a hinge. This is literally the only real loose point on this figure, but it's not even that bad. Uh, it's just really this little notch here. All the other notches are pretty substantial, especially in the front. So, um, you know, it's whatever. He's got a little bit of wiggle wobble in the uh, feet, but nothing not Skelegod bad. If you want to talk about can't stand worth a crap, look at that figure. Um, anyone has a decent fix for that, let me know. I know there's the... Uh, every elusive Elmer's glue trick, which I actually did try on my uh, Blood Feud Hunter spawn that I reviewed the other day, and uh, I had quite a bit of success with it. So, you know, maybe that's something to try out with Skelegod's feet. I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys might have done to tighten that up a bit, just because it just seems so gosh darn loose. What sucks is if uh, I flip the foot around and kind of do the whole have his feet pointing backwards thing. It's a little tighter that way on Skelegon, not Scareglow here. So it's, it's very weird. It's like the joints are backwards or something. But With that being said, uh, one thing to mention too, popping his head off, his collar is a separate piece. And I kind of like this a little better than the Origins one. I'm curious what this cape and collar piece would look like on the Origins one. But we're not going to waste time doing that. You guys probably mostly want to see what the Origins head looks like on this figure. So that's what you're going to get. But before we take a look at some comparisons, we need to take a look at that glow-in-the-dark noggin of his. So hold on just one moment. And as promised, here is a look at the glow-in-the-dark noggin on Scareglow. Does it glow that great, to be quite honest? It's already starting to kind of fade out as I'm talking here. So, yeah, I wish they could have maybe done that a little bit better. The Origins one glows like a champ, so I'm surprised this one doesn't glow a little bit better. But with that being said... Let's now take a look at some comparisons. First up, here is our new-ish, well, new to me anyways, Revelation Scareglow from the Masterverse line next to his Origins counterpart. And stay tuned, I will be doing a quick head swap between those two in just a moment. And then we also have another character from Revelation, Mighty Skeletor, <laughs> which if you remember, the head of his Havoc staff was actually the key to get to Subternia in Motu Revelation. So figured I'd throw him in here for a quick comparison. And as promised, here is a look at the Origins Scareglow head on this new, well, again, new to me, or new-ish, whichever you prefer, 
Revelation Scareglow body and it kind of fixes the color problem I had with this guy originally. The head seemed a little bit off as far as the colors go. It seemed a little bit darker than the rest of the body, which this seems to fix, but it also doesn't really fit that Motu Revelation animation style. It's starting to look a little bit more like a shrunken down version of the first Mondo Scareglow, if you remember that. But Still cool nonetheless. Up next, here he is next to a couple of female figures from Motu Revelation that are also a part of the Masterverse line. And since this guy utilizes a lot of the same parts as the He-Man and or Skeletor Buck, he's going to be a little bit taller than these two. But of course, we have Evil Lin, who I hope we get to see the God Lin or the more classic looking Evil Lin at some point because you guys know how I feel about that figure. Nice representation, but a bland design. And we also have Tila, who is going to be receiving another figure in the very near future, along with the, uh, I'm going to call it post-apocalyptic version of Merman, where he's all scarred up. Really looking forward to picking those two up. But again, Scareglow, of course, is taller because he utilizes the bigger, more broader male buck. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus and the Unk 11 Spawn, who as usual, towers over everyone. And I'm quite surprised, because I thought him and Scareglow would have been evenly matched, but nope. So, with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and if you guys know me well enough by now, you totally saw this coming. And the fact that, yes, this is my favorite figure in the Masterverse line as far as Motu Revelation is concerned. You guys know me by now. If you are an avid viewer slash watcher of this channel, you know that Scareglow is my guy when it comes to Masters of the Universe. And of course, this figure is no exception to that rule. It does everything the Origins one did pretty solid albeit without the glow-in-the-dark feature, but we won't talk about that because this is meant to be a different interpretation of Scareglow. I will let that slide, though I will say a glow-in-the-dark version of this figure would be really, really cool and I think very well appreciated by the community. But I'm speaking for myself mostly here. I'd really like to see that just because... Be nice to have a version of this guy that actually glows, because I really like the sculpt on this particular figure. I know it's mostly reuse, but to get one of these that glows in the dark, I don't know. I think that'd be pretty sweet. That said, everything else the Origins one did really well. This one does, I think, a little bit better. Uh, of course, it has more articulation, so that is a plus. Even though you guys know me well enough by now, I'm not really... A big fan of a ton of articulation i kind of think that less is more sometimes and that's why i'm such a big fan of the origins line but when articulation is added and it's added appropriately and or well and the fact that it doesn't hurt the aesthetic which since this guy is pinless it doesn't really do that i'm all for it uh, i think it's really really cool to have some figures you can just pose the crap out of and i think this is definitely a step up from the Origins and even the Motu Classics one, which I know is, at the end of the day, true blasphemy. Blasphemy at its finest. Say anything is better than Motu Classics. I don't care. You can't beat this for 23, 24 bucks. The Classic Scare Glow is like 240 bucks. So keep that in mind. You're paying way less, and I think you're getting way more versatility as far as posability goes you can just do so much more with this guy than you could with the classics one the only thing classics really has going for it is the fact that it was sculpted and painted by the four horsemen who of course do amazing work again if you're an avid viewer of this channel you know i showcase their mythic legions line quite often and i plan to do so again in about a week or two uh, let's just say they had a bit of a sale yesterday, and your boy got some stuff that uh, he's been wanting for a while. So, with that said, back to the figure at hand here. Scareglow, I love him. 
You guys knew that, though. And, of course, he is going to be in the Overlord Action Figure Hall of Fame because, much like the Battle Cat, I don't think there's really anything wrong with this particular release other than maybe some more hands, which you guys know me also. I'm not really into having a crap load of hands. It's just more stuff to throw in a bag and, you know, lose if you're stupid like me. So with that being said, I would highly recommend you pick this guy up if you're jonesing for a really nice Scareglow figure, especially if you're a fan of the Motu Revelation series like yours truly. You won't be disappointed with this guy. Yeah, it's not the Comic-Con version with the cool black light reflective paint, but you guys saw the URL for this video. Not too shabby considering the fact that that has zero black light in it at all. You still get some really nice kind of glowing effects going on just with some simple photo editing techniques, which if you have an iPhone of any kind, it's not difficult to do. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you are so inclined, please hit that notification bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one because we've got to show that algorithm who's boss, right? If you haven't already, hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions where you can actually see me unbox this guy and the Eternian Palace Guard as well as the Stone Cold Steve Austin figure from the Masters of WWE line. I did a bit of an unboxing of Scareglow here and added some extras in. So check that out at your own leisure. It's up on my IGTV slash Instagram page right now. I did go live and I did have problems with the chat. So my apologies to anyone whose comments I might have missed. Uh, I made a second Instagram account to monitor my live stream chats, but it just kind of backfired on me. So hopefully next time I'll get it right. Uh, we'll see. But... As always, remember to keep those comments civil, because the world sucks enough as it is. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.